WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at that. He got it. Spread Eagle for a spin. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got Looks chance. good. That's good to go. That's good. Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. We have a big crowd on hand because it's championship week of our annual mixed doubles tournament. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and uh, we're left with our top two seeded teams. Uh, these roll-off scores were really something special, and... Uh, I suppose it's only fitting that we should end up with the, the four bowlers who were up at the top of the list. Well, we uh, had some special bowling last couple of weeks, too, mm, and a big true. 400 triple by uh, Debbie Scano and Jackie Ray last week. And uh, this week, the number one seeded team comes in, so we could have double 400s. Uh, well, you never know. Let's meet our two teams. First of all, our number two seeded group from Beverly, Massachusetts, Debbie Scannell, and her partner from Stowe, Massachusetts, Jack Ray. Okay, uh, Debbie comes in averaging 115, and Jack Ray 124. And as Dan mentioned, last week a 401 to knock off Joe Ashline and Carol Downey, who had won the two previous weeks. So now Jack and Debbie try and make it two in a row. They will face off for the championship against our number one seeded team, both from Amesbury, Massachusetts, Tony Marie Baldinelli and Dennis Shute. Uh, Tony Marie comes in averaging 119, Dennis Shute at 124. Well, it'll be $800 to the winning team, $400 to the runner-up team. We're also going to have $120 in our bonus ball contest at the end of the hour. So lots to get to. We'll get the bowlers up on the lanes for the first of our three-game match here on Stars and Strikes right after these words. Here are the five teams when we started this mixed doubles tournament. Uh, we are left now with our top two teams. Again, the roll-offs for men and women were held separately, and then the roll-off scores were added together. So, for instance, Dennis Shoot with that 751. Actually, Jack Ray also had a 751 to tie for the top in the men's roll-off. The uh, tie was settled by high single. As it turned out, Dennis had a 184 high game in the roll-off. Jack had a 164. That's how the tie was broken. And uh, over on the ladies' side, Tony Marie Baldinelli with a 656. Debbie Scannell with a 642. So you add the scores together, and those are the numbers you get. And we are ready to make some new numbers now as we start our championship match with Debbie Scannell. It's always interesting to talk about the roll-off scores, but... None of that really matters now, does it? No, it just uh, talks about it. Now I just threw mine away. <laughs> Down to some live bowling. Or, well, semi-live. Whoops. Debbie trying to bail out here this first game. First box, just a six. Last week on the way to that 401, Debbie and Jack had 14 marks and they had seven each. That's splitting the load. That's how to do it. Sure. Oh, oh right one. through the heart that time. One in the five. Don't see that very often. Oh, great oh. shot. Certainly was. Good bid for a spare and that difficult shot. And let's see. Now it'll be a nine. <laughs> Tough nine, though. And now Tony Marie Baldinelli. Tony will be shooting at the one and the three for a spare. Hurry with it. Nope. Left it out to the right. Turns the ball over a little bit. Wants the ball to break a little bit from right to left. Still there for nine.
pull that one just a little bit. It'll be an eight. So a two pin difference after the ladies finish their first turn and now it'll be up to the men. For their first tries of the day, Jack Ray first. Interesting, the one, six, seven, ten. Yes. Spare in the third for the team of Jack Ray and Debbie Scannell. You see the wood takes care of the four and uh, six and ten and head pin goes down and takes the seven pin. Jack thought he had a big ball on that one. He was almost down on one knee that time. Just four on the fill. Seven. Quick reminder, two weeks from today, Stars and Strikes will be presented at 11 a.m., just for that one day only. Sunday, March 31st, 11 a.m. for Candlepin Stars and Strikes to uh, accommodate our telecast of the Arthritis Telethon starting at noon here on the Winds of New England. And the following week, April 7th, we'll be back at our regular noon starting time. Bear for Dennis Shute in his first box of the day. Takes, takes care of the four horsemen on the left. Dennis and Tony Marie both living in Amesbury. Dennis works at AT&T Technologies. Going for the second spare and not quite. And nudges it for the 10. It's an early eight pin advantage for the team of Dennis Shute and Tony Marie Baldinelli. $400 to the runner up team today, $800 to the winning team. Big ball for Debbie Scannell. Her first mark. Debbie's been throwing a lively ball the last couple of weeks. Just a matter of time before the six pin goes down for the strike. Just touched the head pin that time. The baby Hilo Jack <laughs> with Wood. No. And that'll be a nine box for Debbie. Clipping that piece of wood in the channel for the nine. Tony Marie on the head pin and looking for the extra mix. Didn't quite get all of it. The six and the seven. Question is, could that connecting point of the wood cover the shot? Let's see. Not uh, quite. I think the shot was that wood. Uh, that, you know, it was just a little too deep. I'll never know, but I would have tried to play that front piece. Because it's easy after you see that. <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> Everyone's sitting home, sure, yeah. After you see her throw the ball, <laughs> I wouldn't play it either. 
This one's out further, so twisted behind it. Well, another interesting leave. The one, seven, nine, and ten this time with more wood. Yes, this time. Nice shot by Tony Marie. Her first mark of the day. Second for the team, all, both of them spares. Talk about throwing a lively ball. Jack has been throwing it too the last couple of weeks. Very smooth, as always. Spare leave on the 2-5. Yes. Spare in his seventh. Their third mark, two spares and one strike for the team, as you can see. Through the center for the spread eagle. Second four fill they've had. Oh, look at this. How about it? Wow. <laughs> Made it look like a routine 10. Check the spread eagle attempt. Oof. <laughs> Dennis Shoot now filling a spare left by his partner. As the team will retake the lead. For another spare, no. Nine box for Dennis. A one pin lead for Shoot and Baldinelli. Next Sunday, of course, we will begin our final regular season series of the year as we look toward our fifth qualifier, or rather our sixth qualifier. We only need one more for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We'll begin that search next week. The tournament is not far off now. No, it won't be long. Always a fun time, an exciting time. We were talking about 400 triples a week ago. It's our first one in this mixed doubles tournament, but we had two of them last year. Dan Broder and Janet Pop through a 403. And Kevin Davis and Glennis Mangano through a 419 a year ago. Debbie Scannell for the spare. No problem. All on the four, four and seven. All four of the marks for the team of Ray and Scannell have been on lane 32. And they've had trouble with the fills on lane 31. <laughs> Especially on the spares. Yikes. That looked a lot better than that, but only five. Yeah. Going to go after the two pin with a piece of wood behind it and see if you can get something moving left and right. Got a shot. Oh. Oh. Chance to clean these both up for a 10. There it is. For a 113 for Ray and Scannell, but the story is there. Dan, four marks and a 113. That's right. And so immediately when you hear that, four marks, 113, you know that the fills were subpar, to say the least. Chance for Tony Marie to give her team the lead if she's able to put a mark up here in the final two.
No, not that time. Wow. I think Tony Marie thought maybe she had thrown a good ball there. And it's just a seven. Frustrating box. Final box of the first game and a break for Tony Marie to split up the diamond. Again, so she has one of those pieces of wood that's looking directly at her and not much room to get by. If she caps it, she is going to miss the shot. Oh, nicely done. Just there to the is. right. Sparing the tenth. Seven pins for a tie match. Anything more than that, she'll take the lead. And this all with just three marks for the team of Shoot and Baldinelli, illustrating the difference in the fills. Oh, Tony Murray pulled that one and didn't even want to look at it. Just three on the fill, 109 for the team, and a four pin match after one game. Ray and Scannell at 113, shoot in Baldinelli, 109. We're back with game two and details on the bonus ball jackpot in a minute. Coming up at the end of the hour, $120 in the bonus ball contest as we look for our second winner of the year. We have to have your postcards in in order for you to have a chance to win. Mail them into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And be sure to include on those postcards your name, your full address, the number from 1 to 10, the number of pins you think will drop on the bonus ball at the end of the show. If we draw your card out and it matches the pinfall, then you win the jackpot and a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries in Medway, Massachusetts. And in the case of mixed doubles, each of the winning team would also win a set of brand new bowling balls as well. Oh, I thought they'd get two each. <laughs> no, they don't have to split it. <laughs> Nine box for Dennis Shute. Of course, those donated by our friends down at Paramount Industries, Bob Perella and all the, the gang down there. Always good to us, supplying those gifts of new sets of bowling balls. Oh, Bob will be terrorizing golf courses any day now. Yeah. It's getting close. Here we are on St. Patrick's Day, and a happy one to everybody. No, it's, he used to terrorize the, the slopes, too, you know, <laughs> until uh, he broke an ankle. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. Well, I will say, I'm, I'm not the biggest uh, fan of snow in New England, I'll say that, but I was very happy for the uh, ski operators. I, I know Bob Perl is going to get a lot of heat for that. I probably shouldn't have said that, but I think he was trying out for the Olympics. I think he, he would have uh -oh, qualified if he is didn't that fall. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the best he... I could do, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, anyway. <laughs> well, after the winter we had last time around, uh, I was happy for the uh, ski area that's operators sorry. that they kind of made up a little bit. But remember, the bowling centers are still open. There you go. Snow, sleet, gloom yeah, of night. That's right. <laughs> Us and the mailman. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a seven box for Jack Ray starting off. Opposite of spare now for Dennis Shoot. And huh, neither one went down. The seven and the ten are both still there. Now here's another situation. You might want to play that one far to the left. I'm not so sure. And, and part of that piece of wood is on the lane. Yeah, you the can't red really line tell. Down. Can't really tell. Uh, he's going to well. play that one. Yeah. You couldn't really tell from that camera angle, but that leftmost piece of wood is partly on the lane. You might have had a very uh, tough ruling on that if That's you had right. gone for that pin. Would have been very, because you can only play the portion of the wood that's on right. the lane. Well, the commissioner's in the truck, so we would I say just ask for a ruling. Okay. That is five fill on the spear for Tony Marie. To give her team the lead in the match.
seven. Tony Murray works at Lawrence Memorial Hospital. She has a daughter, Krista Brassard. And of course, anybody who is familiar at all with the history of this game is familiar with the Baldinelli name, That's certainly. For sure. Especially her dad, Tony, Hall of Fame, Candleton Bowler. Her cousin Rico has been with us before. That's right. Yep. Wow, Tony. Coming back. Tony may uh, miss this if she doesn't turn around. <laughs> <laughs> it almost went anyway. Does that count if you don't see it? <laughs> <laughs> Ten four, bucks. 41 after four. And a slim lead. Well, our chance for double 400s are dashing by the minute, but we're certainly going to have a close match in this. And actually, we have not had back-to-back -back marks yet That's in right. this match. Each team with four marks, but we haven't seen any of them together yet. Oh, oh. great shot by Debbie Scannell. Not quite, but what a great effort. Ten box. Watch this spare attempt, though. The four, five, seven, and nine, and very nearly made it. I don't know if we've ever seen that shot made. No. On this show. Of course, we don't get sit, shot at very often either. Uh, you don't want to leave that particular uh, no. leave and have to <laughs> shoot at it. Oh, is that three pin going to fall? No, it's just going to keep rocking back and forth. One, three, four, and seven. See if she can convert this one. Nope, off target. Seven box and through four. Game number two, we take a break. The team of Shoot and Baldinelli have turned it around here in game two. So far, they lead in the match now by four. We'll be back in a minute. You look at Dennis Shute, the team of Shute and Baldinelli, the top-seeded team. As you see, Dennis finishing first in the men's roll-off. Tony Marie Baldinelli first in the ladies' roll-off. And how about Dennis Shute and Jack Ray each shooting 751 in the roll-off? That's, that's just amazing. That's 150 a game. Spare for Dennis. So they shouldn't miss any legitimate <laughs> spares today. They should hit all of them. Because I bet you they didn't miss too many that day. Probably not. 51. <laughs> and I had a, probably a few strikes thrown in there. You missed it at the top of the show. We were talking about the tiebreakers that were involved in these roll-offs. There were several of them. And one of them was to settle Dennis and Jack after they each rolled 751. Dennis Shute had a 184 high game in the roll-off. That settled the tiebreaker. Jack's high game was 164. And there are back-to-back -back spares, just as you ordered, Dan. <laughs> the diamond is never easy, but the little piece of wood there helps, helps keep it all yeah. together. First time in the match, back-to-back -back marks for either team. Jack Ray. Look out. Now, here's something surprising, Dan. That's the first nine drop today for either team. Oh! <laughs> Jack stayed up there to look at it to make sure. <laughs> you had to wait a little bit on now, that how one. How do you remember that that's the only nine drop? You well, I... A photograph of memory? Well, you well, two no, I'd love notes. to take track and keep track. Uh, I'd love to tell I you see. that I remember, but I do keep track of that, so... Oh! How about that nine drop? <laughs> you blink and this one is gone. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> throw up a double mark, a double mark. Match Tony Marie's and Tony's off to the right, just three on the spare. Nine box for Tony Marie.
see, still a very tight match here. Tony Marie back on the head pin there. And there's a nine drop. I have a tendency to think that Tony's timing is off just a little bit, a little bit frustrated. So she needs something like this to get a mark up there and give a little confidence. And that was there a good box. Both balls right on the object pin. Nine pin drop and now the spare. Seven marks for the team now of Shoot and Baldinelli, all spares. Debbie Scannell working on Jack Ray's strike. Oh, Boy, my. That, that was a good-looking ball, and look at the leave. It was buried into the 1-3 uh, pocket. Similar shot on the opposite side that she uh, got three out of four pins before, and this time takes the 5-9 and nine for 9 Phil. Ray and Scannell jump back into the lead. Now by seven in the match. But opposite of spare here in the eighth as we go back and forth. It's been that kind of match. Oh, look at that. Same looking ball as the last one. This time, though, she clears everything away but the five. She's got room to the right for that wood there. But she's right on it. Oh. Don't worry about the wood to the right. She's right on that five pin. Matches the mark put up by Tony Marie. Spare fill here for Dennis Shute. And he is in the pocket with a solid nine drop. Again, leaving the five pin. And the wood turned beautifully for him, and now it's even rolling back toward the five. For the spare. Lead jumping back and forth. Of course, that's a temporary lead because they haven't filled, Debbie Scannell hasn't filled the uh, spare in the eighth. Or I should say Jack Ray. And shoot, though, will fill his own. Oh, oh look out. Just three. The one, the eight, and the nine. So the fills is turn the fill on the spares have hurt Dennis Shoot and Tony Marie this, this game. Five fill, a six, and two threes, along with a nine. looking for a bailout ball here and he'll settle for six 117 226 after two An opportunity here for Jack Ray building on a spare Wow only four on his. Better opportunity to follow up, though, at least. A little too thin. Do you get the feeling that this is going to be one of those matches that just goes all the way to the last box? I have that feeling, yes. <laughs> Neither team has had more than a 10-pin lead in this entire match. Keep watching the computer screen, every time I put a score in, the lead jumps to the other side and put another <laughs> Jump back and forth. You know it's pretty close. It's going to jump again. Back to the shoot and Baldinelli side. That's a difficult spear, but even without the spear, he could pull within two. No, actually, he could take the lead. He's opposite a six frame. No, oh, oh, not close to a spare. Well, gives him one pin advantage, I believe, right? Yes, it does. Make it two. Ten box, 115. You'll see the scores. For Shoot and Baldinelli, 226. For Ray and Scannell, 228. Just a two pin difference with one game to go to decide the championship here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be right back.
This big crowd ready for game three to decide the championship. And Jack Ray splashing down eight. Yeah. Eight and ten left, though. One end to the other. Go try the right end and snap it, and oh. he snapped it back and forth and never touched either one of them. And hit it again, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See if this one works. There it was. It was a much more favorable setup that time, though, than it was the first That's time. That's right. You can see the 10 box. And another split. Jack's going to look it over and wait for that wood to settle. Help him decide how to play this. I think he's going to have to go left-hand tip and just just catch the wood and hope he can throw the ball with the 4-7. Now he's going the other side. I don't, I don't think I think that would just spin around in a circle, but oh, nice cut shot, but only a nine. Well, two open frames for Dennis Shute to work on. Trailing by two pins. Off the head pin, but a spare lead. One, three, and six. Takes care of that in fine fashion. Mark number nine for the team. They are still without a strike. <laughs> Just four on the fill. That's enough to retake the lead, but hardly call the spread eagle a spare leaf. Nine box. Well, Lee jumps over the other side. <laughs> Two <laughs> pins for Dennis Shute and Tony Marie Baldinelli. Debbie Scannell drops nine. So spare? Yes. Had to wait it out a little bit just to make sure. Never know what that wood is going to do on the deflection. Eight marks for the team. it with eight. Leaves herself to two and the five. Trying to make it two in a row and stretch the lead out a little bit. No. No. Debbie. A little frustrated with herself that, he, that she missed that shot. some trouble staying on the head pin, but a nice recovery on that ball. This isn't, uh, I've seen her sharper, but she seems to manage to come back with, with a good ball after a poor one, and that, when you start knocking down seven pins for a spare, you, <laughs> you know you're in a lot of trouble. That one, she got that ball out in front of her and on the head pin, dropped seven. 
three, five, and six. Triangle, make it two in a row. Looks good. Yes. Oh, took so a little time. Had to do it the hard way, <laughs> but that's a spare to take us to break. Great match going in the championship. Ray and Scannell against Shoot and Baldinelli will be back for the final boxes after these words. Jack Ray. Jack leaves the four horsemen, everything else in the pit. to the left of the head pit and just a domino effect to the right. Watch this. It's like they were tied together. Spare up in the fifth. Big spare, too, with... Really, because the other team is sitting on a pair of spares. A little late with that one, but he's going to have another four horsemen, this time to the left, but also the ten pin. And also a little of ex extra space between the two and the four. Yeah. Oh! Shots. Oh, wow. Great exhibit there by Jack Ray. Yeah. Two Clinic fine spare, shots. Spare shooting here by both teams. Dennis Shoot now will fill the spare put up by Tony Marie. And he'll nope. shoot at the four <laughs> horsemen and the eight pin. Something a little different. Got a chance. Oh, he moved the eight pin. Ten box. And this is a two pin match right now with five boxes to go. Ray and Scannell with the spare up. Slim four pin advantage, but Dennis is going to have to match the mark already put up by Jack Ray. Another four horse no, lead. We've had a lot of those last several boxes. He's got some help coming. Well. Yes. Yes, sir. Wow. Boy, this sets up to be just a great finish as we go to the final four boxes. on a spare she will take five missed the head pin to the right got just five one two five eight and nine and there's a piece of wood in between there looks pretty good oh oh wow wow <laughs> Debbie Scannell from Beverly Mass works at Chase Global Funds and uh, Funds Service Company for her final box of the day now, barring overtime. Oh, right in the pocket. Give her a break. My, five and seven, but the wood stays. Uh, I think you heard somebody say, hit the wood and you have it. Anywhere around the red line should carry this. Right on. Oh, no. Wow. I cannot believe that. Wow. Was there a double piece of wood there? I think wanted? there might have been. I think there was that a double piece there. Dead in the ball or something. Let's check it out. Yes, yep. there is. A, yeah, and it just had the extra push with the ball around the seven pin. So probably left of the red line or way yeah. down on the tip would have yeah. been the only play. Tony Marie filling a spare with just three. That's the fourth three fill on a spare for the team of Shoot and Baldinelli. Good recovery with the second ball. She wants to put that first one in there, especially when she's on a mark. Eight. The difference in the match is one pin with three boxes to go. Oh, 
if there is overtime, by the way, two boxes will decide it. And it will be the ladies' turn in overtime if there is overtime. <clears throat> the lead now has jumped. Jump so quickly, I keep forgetting to tell you, but it's back on the other side now. Ray and Scannell have a one pin advantage. Tony needs one of these to keep it at one. Hoping for both, but not quite enough, so it'll be a one pin match in favor of Ray and Scannell going to the final two boxes. Wow. Been like this all day. I really has. This should come as no surprise. Jack is a little full. Could not break up the split. Don't be a surprise he just cut this over. No. It's heavy on the three pin. Oh, just an eight. Regardless now of what happens, then a shoot will have fate of the match in his own hands when he gets up for the ninth and tenth. Big first ball that time, and Jack will shoot at the single. Of course, this will make. Dennis throw two marks if he was to get this and a decent fill. Big spare. 11 marks for the team. The, the all-important fill now, though. means Dennis Shute must get 29 pins to tie. So that's how big those last two pins are. 29 pins to tie for Dennis Shute. Meaning he would need two marks to win it. He would need some combination of two marks in order to have any chance to win. Not there. These are big pins right here. Yep. Huge. Remember, 29 is the, is the number. Can't afford to leave any of these standing. Well, he got two of them. That means he will need 20 pins in the 10th. Double strike plus to win or a spare strike to tie. Strike spare to die, tie. Needs 20 pins to tie. 21 to win. What a great finish. In the pocket, a little bit of a mix, not a great mix, but he'll have at least a shot here at the eight and the 10 because of the wood. Kind of funny to predict how this will go though. Yeah, you have to shoot both pieces of wood up front. Kind of hit with a, either a cap it or it hit the V and you got them moving both ways. Oh, he's he still alive, he's still alive. He Down needs them all the tie. <laughs> Down to the final ball. Well, here's the situation. Dennis Shute and Tony Marie Baldinelli have gone the entire match without a strike. <laughs> if Dennis can throw one now, we will have two boxes of overtime to decide it. Let's see. It will not happen for Dennis. Great finish, Jack Ray and Debbie Scannell. Thanks to 20 pins in the 10th for Jack Ray, putting the pressure on and getting the win. 122 to 121 in the final game, and you see the totals. 350 for Ray and Scannell, 347 for Shoot and Baldinelli. We'll be back with the bonus ball jackpot in a minute. Don't go away. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes, a match worthy of a, a championship match going right down to the final ball. This, uh, this was just destined to be close all the way, I think, Tony Murray, but uh, decided in the last box that's how it was just going to happen. 
Yeah, Denny didn't have much help today at all. <laughs> Sorry, Denny. <laughs> well, it was it was tough for everybody. It seemed uh, uh, the the marks just weren't bunched together uh, like you like to ho see, especially in doubles competition. But uh, you guys were able to uh, to give them quite a battle right up until the end. At least you knew going into the last box right, right what you needed, right? Yeah. Twenty <laughs> pins in the last box. Yeah. No, no easy task. <laughs> At least I threw one good ball. That was the last one. <laughs> well, congratulations to both of you. Uh, split four hundred dollars prize money, and we hope to see you again. I hope so. All right, Tony, Marie, and Dennis, thanks very much. And now we'll have Jack Ray to try and get us a winner in the bonus ball contest. Dan is ready to draw the all-important postcard, and uh, he's ready to do his part, so now Jack has to do his. $120 on the line here. And it will be a seven. Come on over, Jack and Debbie, because I got checks for you here in a second. Oh, he almost drew two out. Not a match. Carol Harris from East Taunton, Massachusetts. Uh, a guess of eight. So for Carol, and hello to everybody down in East Taunton. We will add $10 to the jackpot. Carol Harris will be getting a uh, consolation prize. And uh, this is no consolation prize. Uh, sharing $800, Mr. Ray and Ms. Scannell for first prize. <laughs>